As Vice-Chancellor of the University of Oxford and as a neuroscientist, and actually as somebody that spent over six years as a trustee of MQ, which is one of the only designated research charities to support research in mental health. I'm delighted to be here to give my vote of support for the campaign that's been running where we've been able to showcase the extraordinary range of research that we're doing here at the University of Oxford to understand the brain and mental health disorders. We are in an incredible place right now where we've got an array of researchers from students through to senior professors who are dedicated in taking on some of the greatest challenges of our time and tackling some of the big questions around what makes the brain work and what makes us who we are and how that contributes to what we call more social neuroscience, so understanding ourselves as societies and how we interact, coming up with new mechanisms that we can then tackle and target to hopefully benefit patients. I am a firm believer, of course, as an educator and a researcher within the university sector, that the universities have a critical and key role to play in taking on some of these grand challenges. And I'm delighted to be playing my part as leader of the university to support this work. And it's fantastic to see this campaign and the opportunity to showcase and celebrate just a little bit of that work that's ongoing. What's the new biology that we need to still uncover so that we're targeting the right biology, not the wrong biology, so that we can actually treat the disease and the mechanisms of chronic pain. And it's actually one of the biggest medical health problems that we have now in the developed world. One in five of the adult population have chronic pain, and it's a huge societal burden of suffering, but it's also got some of the most basic, interesting neuroscience questions that are almost philosophical about understanding somebody's private subjective pain. And can you use brain imaging or neuroimaging to go inside the person's brain and try and understand why their pain perception is a certain way. The challenge is difficult because, you know, pain affects the whole, what we call, neuraxis. So right from the, where the injury might have occurred, you know, the nerves that are bringing the signals in, the spinal cord that's taken up to the brain, and then the brain itself. And so you can have no injury and a lot of pain, tiny injury, a lot of pain, lots of injury, very little pain. How on earth can that happen? It's not a simple linear relationship. And we've been understanding using our brain imaging tools where the amplifiers are that turn up the volume, whether they turn it down, how is it that the brain can construct the experience differently even to the same input and how does that occur? So why is it when you're happy it doesn't hurt as much or if you're anxious or sad it hurts more and how we must engage with the brain's role in that to think about the psychological interventions as much as the pharmacological interventions that maybe are dealing with the initiating injury. And I'm very optimistic about going forward for the patients who so far really have very few treatments that work for them, that the new understanding of the new biology, which of course I'm now not doing in my new role as Vice-Chancellor, will give new opportunities for interventions and therapies going forward so that we can really address this major medical health problem.